Hey guys, happy Monday. Hope everybody's doing well out there and had a great weekend. Uh, we're just gonna jump right in it today. And uh, today we're gonna take a look at a Docker application called C file. Uh, that's S E A file. So like C water. Uh, anyway, uh, C file is very much like having your own hosted uh, Dropbox or uh, Google Drive or something like that. Um, and I've already installed this on my main server just to give it a test. And I'm really, really uh, enjoying how easy it is to use. So uh, without uh, spending too much time on this introduction, uh, let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at C file. So here we are on my desktop and here we can see that we're on the C file website uh, and they can see that it says right here, reliable and performant file sync and share solutions. They've got a lot of great information on their website. Uh, so I definitely encourage you to go check that out. Uh, there will be a link for that in the description down below uh, that will probably take you over to my blog that will then link to this, but uh, there will be information about this in the description one way or the other. Uh, so if we want to uh, host this on our own server uh, via Docker, what we can do is jump over to here. Uh, they've actually got uh, some great information for running uh, this in a Docker uh, container. So uh, all we should have to do then uh, is copy this over into a portainer stack. So if I paste that in, now this is a modified version that I had pasted or copied from somewhere else. Uh, basically all I did though, uh, was I changed this port from 80 to 9080. I changed the volume for where things will be stored uh, and I changed uh, the time zone and uh, my email address and this password right here. Of course, you wouldn't want to use password as your password, but uh, that's just for the sake of this video. Um, so again, all of this will be available in the uh, blog uh, and linked in the description. Uh, so let's kind of take a look at this. Uh, first thing we've got is a database. Uh, then we've got memcached. Uh, so let's actually take a quick look uh, at this. Um, so it's uh, in memory key value store for small chunks of arbitrary data. Uh, so it's just a caching system to help uh, speed up the process or speed up the way the system works. Um, I, I have tried this again, it works very, very well. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and leave memcached in there. And then of course we've got C file, uh, which is the application and it depends on the database and memcached and it's going to create a C file network. Now, uh, there are a couple of other things that you may see down here about this uh, C file server let's encrypt. I've got that set to false. Um, and then I've got a host name and uh, I've actually got a, a, a URL set up there. We are gonna use that URL. Uh, we're gonna set this up through Nginx uh, proxy manager. So that's why we're not going to use the uh, SSL built into this. We're actually gonna use a third party uh, with Nginx proxy manager to give access uh, to, uh, to everything uh, via a domain name. And of course, uh, I've already got that cfile.dbtechyt.com in there. Uh, I've already forwarded all my ports and everything. Uh, ports 40 or 80 and 443 have been forwarded uh, from my modem to my router, to my server. Um, and so that's how we're gonna access it. But these two files or these two lines right here don't matter since we're not, since we've got this one set to false. So uh, then all we should be, have to do here is uh, uh, give it a name. I think that's gonna be fairly important here. So we'll just copy this. We'll paste that in there and we'll click deploy the stack. And it says it's unable to deploy and I don't have a clue as to why. So uh, I, I actually ran into this every time I've tried to install this. For some reason, it just throws that error. And I found the easiest way to do this is jump over uh, to uh, your command line, uh, log in and then do mkdir uh, c file and then, oops, yep, and then cd c file and, uh, and then we can do nano docker compose.yml and then we can paste all of that in there. Um, once you've got all of this set up, you should be good to go. Uh, so you can press control O and enter and control X. Uh, just to come back to here and we can do docker, co oops, uh, compose up minus D. And uh, okay, so I've already downloaded this. Like I said, I've done some testing. Uh, it, normally you're gonna go through a process of it downloading and extracting and doing all that kind of stuff, but I've already done this. So we don't need to do that anymore. Okay, so now that it looks like everything over here looks good. So let's take a look at our port or our, our logs here for C file. Looks like uh, C or uh, C hub rather, not C file. C hub, wait, C file. C hub is what it's running in the background. I'm real confused. Anywho, uh, it looks like it's up and running. So let's change this 
to 9080 or 80 mm -hmm, cancel 9080 I believe there it is uh, so now uh, we can, should be able to go ahead and click log in just to make sure everything there seems to be working so uh, what we want to do then is come over to nginx proxy manager go to hosts we're going to create a proxy host uh, we'll click on add proxy host uh, the domain name will be cfile.dbtech Oops, yt.com. Uh, then we're going to do 192.168.1.30. Um, and we did this on port 9080. So let's do that. Oops, I did it again. 9080. We'll block common exploits. We'll go to SSL. We'll request a new SSL. We'll force it. We'll request HTTP2 HTTP support. We'll say, I agree. And then we'll click save. And uh, hopefully this won't give us any errors or problems or anything. All right, so uh, now I should be able to click here. And there we go. So uh, David at dbtechreviews.com. Password, oops. Oops. Dot com. And it's thinking, so that's good. We're gonna say, don't worry about that. All right, let's refresh. There we go. Just had to do a page refresh. But here we are logged in. Uh, we can see my library here. Uh, they've got a tutorial document in here if you wanna take a look at that. Um, so it can't view it, but you can download it. And uh, hey guys, the reason that uh, that file didn't load properly when I tried to download it was because we have to set the service URL uh, variable. We'll actually come to that here in just a minute when we take a look at the uh, the admin settings or the server admin settings. Uh, there's actually a spot in there where you need to put the uh, the full uh, like HTTPS, um, you know, cfile.dbtechyt.com because I didn't have that in there. It was trying to kick me over to the server URL and it was causing like a, a, a cross server issue. So uh, once you set that service URL, that issue goes away. So if we uh, jump around here a little bit, we've got uh, options for shared with me, shared with all, shared with groups. You can favorite things by clicking the little star there, successfully added to my library, uh, published libraries, uh, linked devices. So if you wanted to say back up your desktop or your phone, I've actually set my phone up uh, to back up to uh, my C file and my main server. It's crazy fast. Uh, really, really surprised by how fast it worked. Uh, then you've got uh, shared admin. You can come up here. Uh, you can go to system admin. There's a bunch of settings in here uh, that you can go through uh, and uh, make sure that everything is working. Oh, so service URL. Uh, this is why uh, we were running into a bit of an issue there, I believe. Uh, so let's change this like that. Uh, so we can change that to, uh, apparently doesn't want me to change that internal URL. Oh yeah, it's an internal URL. Um, <clears throat> So we can change the service URL uh, so that we can uh, download things remotely. Uh, that's probably gonna be good uh, if you're gonna access this remotely. If you're just gonna access this locally for local backups, that sort of thing, you shouldn't need to do this. But uh, again, if you're gonna set up uh, a remote access, uh, you'll wanna change that service URL. Uh, you can change the title, the site name, uh, logos, backgrounds. Uh, you can use custom CSS. Uh, so you have lots of options here in settings. Uh, libraries, uh, we can add users if you wanted to do that. Uh, then you can actually share files between users. Uh, you can share files externally, that sort of thing. You can set up groups and notifications and links uh, for share links, things like that. Uh, this will actually just give you a list of all the links that are being shared presently. Um, so overall, uh, pretty easy to set up and very, very useful. So guys, there you go. There's how to set up C file on your Docker Portainer instance. Super easy. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it to work in Portainer uh, through the interface. So we did have to launch it through Docker uh, using uh, all of the same stuff. But for some reason, we just had to go about it a bit of a different route. So uh, hopefully you found the video helpful. Again, all of this will be linked in the description down below. Uh, so if you want to check that out, definitely do that. Um, uh, also, while you're down there in the description, there are a couple of links you can check out if you'd like. Uh, one is a one-time tip jar called Coffee. The other is Patreon, and we're all familiar with Patreon. Uh, there are a couple of levels in my Patreon, though, that will give you access to a patrons-only Discord server uh, where we can hang out and chat about whatever you'd like to chat about. No restrictions in there. So I think that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to say in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. 
As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support, and I'll talk to you in the next video.